Hi, this is Rabbi Jeremy Lawrence from Kinloss Synagogue. This week's parsha is Vayishlach, which tells of Jacob's return to Canaan after his time with his uncle Laban. Jacob is warned that his brother Esau is heading to meet him with a large following, and is mindful that, at their last encounter, Esau had vowed to kill him. Accordingly, Jacob adopts three strategic measures. He divides his camp so that Esau cannot attack them all at once. He sends extensive gifts in order to appease him, and he prays, because that is what godly people do. We're then told that the night was falling, and during this night, Jacob wrestled with an angel. It was a tough bout, in physical terms. We're told that the angel touched Jacob's hip, dislocating it. The Bible says at the end of this encounter that the consequence to this day is that the sciatic nerve and surrounding tissue a considered non-kosher. It is a puzzlement that the Torah weaves this standalone tenet of kashrut into the Jacob narrative. The leg of lamb or the rump steak we might want for dinner seem a leap of some distance from the grapplings of Jacob and his angel. It's worth a moment to reflect upon the story. Angels are portrayed as spiritual beings. Maimonides describes all experiences with them as prophetic, trance encounters. It seems incongruous, then, that they can fight and cause pain. We can understand, though, that Jacob was wrestling with his demons, if I can borrow that metaphor. It was a conflict of conscience. Back in the old birthright days, Jacob had done what he believed had been right, even the duplicity of dressing in his brother's robes and fooling his father, because he knew, and his mother knew, knew for certain that God had wanted him to inherit. Though twenty years had passed, Jacob was still in fear of Esau, in fear of the consequences of the historic trickery. God had protected Jacob in Laban's household. Nonetheless, Jacob had had to endure the tricks and deceit of his father-in-law, who substituted brides under the chuppah, and who changed his salary many times. And just like Jacob, Laban too had acted from his own sense of pure motive. Surely Everyone would understand that it was better and more compassionate to marry off the older sister first. Surely Jacob would accept that. Surely, too, he would understand that he would have to wait to marry Rachel. After all, how could one signal to Leah that she was a reject? Laban cared deeply for his daughter's feelings. So Jacob was worried. Maybe God would protect him from Esau the same way. Jacob would get through it, but at what cost? Jacob wrestles with an angel. Right and wrong, means and ends are often cloudy and complicated areas. Oftentimes what God seems to want and the circumstances he deals us seem discordant or at odds. I've had many distressed congregants come to me over the years who tell me, Rabbi, I know it's easy for you in life because you believe that everything is God's way. You must always be happy. So maybe you won't understand how I feel. But I can assure you, it's simply not true. If I didn't believe in God, it would be easy to dismiss pain and suffering as just one of those random things. I could expect nothing other than chance and chance suffering in life. It's only because I believe in God that I imagine there should be justice. It's only because I believe in God that I wrestle with the question, why? When Jacob says that he'll only release the angel if he is blessed, Jacob is signalling that, despite the challenges and adversity, the tough path that God has laid out for him, Jacob put his faith in God. He says that the world of faith, the world of spirit, and the world of real life are all connected. And in return, God calls him Israel, the one who has wrestled with God and wrestled with man and prevailed. To this day, we carry the name Israel to remind us of the spiritual challenges and contests we have met. And we do not eat the hindquarters of animals to remind us that our spiritual journey, God's spiritual expectations, of the same world as the world of our real physical life, of hard knocks and difficult choices that we often face. 
Though we wrestle, may we continue to turn to God in our lives, and may we continue to prevail and continue to merit his blessing. This is Rabbi Jeremy Lawrence wishing you a Shabbat Shalom.